Dennis Johnson is one of my favorite writers, and in this video, I'm going to give a complete overview of his most famous works so that you can figure out which you might want to start with, or if you've already read one or two of his works, you have a better idea of which one you might want to get into next. The main thing that you need to know about Dennis Johnson is that his greatness is largely tied to how versatile of a writer he is. He's written everything from a short story collection, Jesus' Son, which is the work that I would suggest that most people start with, to a novella called Train Dreams. This is another very, very accessible work of his. It's super short. You could finish this in a day if you wanted to. I read it most recently, literally on a train, bit on the nose, but whatever. Um, he's also written a super long novel called Tree of Smoke. This is my personal favorite lengthier novel. I put it right up there with the overstory and some other books that I've talked about at length on this channel and on some other platforms. Um, and he's also written a handful of other collections. He's written some poetry, and then he's also written some shorter novels. So if you're looking for something sort of fun, maybe not quite as serious as he gets in some of his best known works, like Jesus' Son, Train Dreams, Tree of Smoke, you might start with The Laughing Monsters or Nobody Move. Nobody Move is a thriller. There's a lot of action in it. His ability to write insanely good dialogue is on full display here. This thing is pretty much all dialogue. And then you'll get a lot of the kind of chaotic, almost crazy flavor of his prose if you dive into The Laughing Monsters. This one is set in Africa, I believe, and follows a couple of people who are caught up in some international intrigue. It's pretty fun. But Dennis Johnson isn't one of my favorite writers just because of how versatile he is. The way that he tells the truth and weaves that into his fiction and really shows you exactly how optimistically he sees even really deep tragedies in the world, that's why you read Dennis Johnson. That's at least why I do. And you get that most clearly in Jesus' Son because it's told from the first person and the narrator is very similar to Dennis Johnson himself, at least at that time in his life. But you do also get it in some of his longer works. I love Tree of Smoke in particular because all of his shorter works really left me craving something longer. So even though Tree of Smoke is probably the work of his that I'm most fond of, I had the deepest emotional experiences reading that book, I don't know that I would suggest that you start there. It's probably best to, again, go for maybe Train Dreams, Jesus' Son, one of his shorter novels. I also really like The Largesse of the Sea Maiden, which is in this stack here. It is the last short story collection of his that was published. I believe it was published posthumously. And the first story in the collection in particular is really good. I believe that's the titular story. Yeah, it is. The Largesse of the Sea Maiden. Dennis Johnson doesn't shy away from writing about people who normally get omitted from a lot of stories. So he throws in criminals, he throws in people who have issues with abusing substances. He really gets at a lot of the problems that all of us have, but he puts those problems on full display through characters that are working through a lot more than most of us are, if that makes sense. So the main character in Jesus' Son, the narrator, is addicted to heroin pretty much throughout the entire collection. The last story is the longest one in that collection, and it's only like 20,000 words. I read it for the first time in about three hours, maybe, maybe three, three or four. I had been assigned a story or two from that collection for a writing workshop that I was in in college, and then picked up the full thing sometime later, but I digress. In the last story, the narrator has committed to getting better. And so he is working a job. He is working through some strange emotions that he's starting to feel. And it gives the end of the book this sense of optimism. You're pulled out of the pits of despair that the characters are in, especially in the earliest stories in that collection. And you're put on to a track back into sort of the real world. Because Dennis Johnson is a great poet and a great short story writer and a great novelist, all of his works 
have elements of each of those mediums. And for that reason, he is extremely unique in the world of fiction. Most writers wish they were poets, try short story writing, fail that, and become novelists. I'm pretty sure that's a Faulkner quote. In fact, I know it is a Faulkner quote. But it's super true. And Dennis Johnson essentially just started as the great poet that he is and then tried a bunch of different other things. He Anything that he attempted to do, he pulled off with great success. One of my favorite blurbs ever was written by Jonathan Franzen about Dennis Johnson's writing, and it reads, The God I want to believe in has a voice and a sense of humor like Dennis Johnson's. And if that doesn't sum up how good he is at telling a story and bringing you through some really dark places and then back into the light, I don't really know what else, what else does. If you read Jesus' Son, you'll have the most to talk about with other people who have tried his works. I think that's where most people start. But if you read Tree of Smoke, you'll have a lot to talk with me about. And so I really hope that at least some of you end up reading that thing. Thank you for watching. This has been an intro to Dennis Johnson's works. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you pick up one of his books. He's one of my favorite writers and always will be. I have already reread some of his books more times than I probably should. I probably should have been trying out some other things, but oh well. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. This channel has been growing and I've really been enjoying making content here. If you're already subscribed, consider hitting the bell icon so that when a new video comes out, you're the first to know. Thank you for watching again. I hope you're enjoying whatever you're reading now and I'll see you again soon.